<sighs> okay, it is about time we talked about this guy, is it not? I know a lot of you were excited for this, I was excited for this. Um, I was kind of waiting, because here's the thing. Strong World the movie came out almost 10 years ago. I checked it. December 17th, 2009 was when that movie was released in Japan. Almost a decade ago. And that just that just makes me feel really old. That was actually right around the time I started reading One Piece on a weekly basis around Impel Down, okay? Um, but, you know, when Strong World came out, everyone was going crazy over Shiki. You have to understand, Strong World was like the first One Piece movie that really kind of like directly connected to the canon. Uh, in a major way, introducing Shiki the Golden Lion, a character that did exist in the past. Now, the plot of the movie Strong World, when the Straw Hats go to Merville and all that stuff with the Daft Green and the IQ shit, you know, that stuff didn't actually happen, obviously. Um, so that, that part, including the Straw Hats, was, you know, that was just movie stuff. But the character Shiki himself did exist in the past. He really was a pirate that clashed with Roger. He really did go up against Garp and Sengoku. He was imprisoned in Impel Down Level 6. He did escape, and after that, we just don't know what happened to him. Um, and so, you know, there were other One Piece movies before that that touched upon canon material. Uh, movies 1 through 7, for the most part, though, were just like their own individual stories. Which, by the way, wasn't I talking about all the One Piece movies on this channel? Whatever happened to that? I don't know. But anyway, then we get to movie 8 and 9. They were like basically reimaginings or retellings of arcs. Um, movie 8 was just an abridged, you know, shortened version of Alabasta. And then movie 9 was like a reimagining of Drum Island, okay, with some new characters thrown in and all that stuff. But then you get to movie 10, and it's like, no, no, this is different. I think this was the moment when, you know, One Piece after 10 years of being around, this is when people started to realize this story was going to be a little bit more than just a really good manga. This was going to be like an epic adventure that was going to last for quite some time you know we're not even close to being done with this story yet that was when i think one piece started becoming this global phenomenon in a big way right and they had strong world to kind of mark that um along with the strong world movie you also had this strong world or also known as one piece chapter zero um and this is the thing i think a lot of people went crazy over even more so than in the movie the movie's amazing by the way if you want to go and check out strong world it's one of the best one piece movies out there um even when you compare it to the uh, most recent ones because i think when you talk one piece movies most people either say strong world film z film gold or stampedu are like the best the four most recent ones but even with you know three movies since strong world there's a lot of people that still consider strong world one of the absolute if not the best One Piece films, okay? So definitely worth checking that out there. Um, but this little chapter that Oda released in conjunction with the movie, that got a lot of people excited because we were delving into the past um, over 20 years ago during that era when Roger, you know, when we see a few of his adventures, the Battle of Ed War, when, when uh, Roger went up against Shiki, you know, Roger has this one ship, the Oro Jackson, and Shiki's got this massive just screw-off fleet ready to just <laughs> take everything Roger had, all right? And Roger really didn't have much of an idea there what to do. Roger was just like, come on, mateys, let's go. And then a freaking storm comes in out of nowhere, and that manages to sink a bunch of Shiki's uh, fleets, and Roger managed to get away pretty much scotch-free there. So, um, yeah, crazy, right? Uh, but I also just wanted to bring up Shiki as a character in the manga right now, because I think there might be a few things that are going to change compared to his movie adaptation, all right? Right. Um, I don't know how much of an input Oda really had in the character of Shiki in the movie. Um, he definitely designed the character. You know, we even see character arc, uh, character art of Shiki in like the first page here. You know, that was obviously Oda, and that's not unusual. Whenever they do a One Piece movie, even the ones that were purely non-canon 100%, they'll usually go to Oda, and Oda will design the main villains of the movie, like Saga from the Sacred Sword movie, right? Or Gasket from the uh, the Adventure of Nami's Jiggling Boobs movie. I mean, or Mechanical Island, whatever that was called, right? Oh, I'm sorry, of course, I can't show images of Nami from movie 7. I gotta show images of Nami from movie 10. Oh, yes, that's, that's way better. Okay, so, anyway... 
Um, no, so I don't think Oda sat down and, like, wrote the entire character of Shiki for the purposes of that movie. Dude's pretty busy, right? So I'm simply saying that the Shiki that we're going to get in the manga coming up here in the flashbacks, um, or maybe in the present storyline, Shiki might reappear, uh, might be a little bit of a different character from the movie. So, let's talk about this. Okay, so we have the Rocks crew, which is where all this kind of started, okay? Uh, Rocks was kind of hanging out on the Beehive Island probably over 40 years ago, maybe even over 50 years ago, and he was chilling out, and he's like, guys, let's get together, and let's make a crew, and let's, like, turn this world upside down. Rocks had a very different goal than what pirates right now do. Most of the pirates in the world right now kind of want to get to Laugh Tale, find the One Piece, and take Roger's title as King of the Pirates. You know, that's what they do right now. Now, keep in mind, though, before Rox's time, I mean, before Roger's time, you know, nobody really had found Laugh Tale, and I'm, I'm sure it existed in, like, legend and lore, like, there's an island called Laugh Tale out there somewhere. Rox wasn't really interested in finding that, though. He wasn't interested in being a king, so to speak, in the sense of just, like, King of the Pirates. No, Rox wanted to rule the world, and we don't know the full scope of that yet. We just know that he gathered his crew together at the Beehive with that intent, with that intent of basically just, like, let's just storm the world with our great immense power, you know, Edward Newgate, Charlotte Linlin, Kaido, we don't know Kaido's real name, just Kaido, um, you know, Silver Axe, we got Wang Zhi, and we got Shiki the Golden Lion, okay? And so they all forged a crew, and they started sailing out in the world, and from what Garp basically told us, from what Garp and Sengoku both kind of said, is that this crew was the single most dangerous pirate crew to ever exist. You know, like, if, if they were to be recreated today, if they were to get back in power right now, there's pretty much nothing anybody could do. Um, they, we would be devastated, alright? Now, yeah, Roger did have the highest bounty for piracy. We don't know what Rox's bounty was, um, but in terms of just pure danger and strength, it seemed like Rox was, like, more devastating than that. And we even see that because Roger had to team up with Garp in order to even take down rocks at the God Valley. And that was 38 years ago. After that, after the event of God Valley, apparently Rox D. Zebek was killed. It's one piece, so you take that with a grain of salt. Take that with a massive mountain of salt, truly. Um, but no, Rox is, he was out of the picture for a while. Let's at least throw that out there. It's like, wherever he's at right now, um, he's laying low if he is still alive, okay? He hasn't made any big moves in quite some time. But after the events of uh, God Valley, the crew disbanded. We see uh, Whitebeard, Edward Newgate, in the most recent One Piece chapter. You know, this is eight years after the events of God Valley. He's already kind of, he has his Moby Dick. He already has most of his crew. Like, you got Marco, Jozu, Whitey Bay, Andre, uh, Rakuyo was there, Ipoida was there, uh, Vista, you know, uh, a lot of the members that we see today, either allied or, you know, part of the Whitebeard crew, you know, he was already creating at that point. Uh, we pretty much know, I mean, even though we didn't get to see Big Mom during this flashback yet with Odin and everything, you know, considering, you know, we know what she all about. She's having kids. She's building up Totland right now. Not really sure what Kaido's up to. Remember, Kaido was an apprentice pirate while he was on Rox's crew, so I don't know what he's up to yet, okay? And um, at this point, this was... The Battle of Ed War took place 27 years uh, before the current storyline. Um, so this is kind of getting really close to that fight when Roger clashed with Shiki. Now, one of the first things that it says in this chapter is... Shiki the Golden Lion was a legendary pirate who once stood as equals with the King of the Pirates, Gold Roger himself. Alright, so it makes sense given the fact, you know, of his upbringing and his pedigree made perfect sense there. Um, I don't like to think... I, I like to think Roger and Shiki were equals in the sense that with Roger, his crew was like a lot smaller, but they were really strong. Shiki's was a lot larger, but overall they were weaker. You kind of understand where I'm coming from there. Shiki had a ridiculously huge fleet. It was like 50-something ships or something like that, okay? It was like Don Krieg, except he didn't suck as hard. You know what I mean? Okay, so Shiki has this massive fleet, and even Roger at that point was like, you know, he, he was like, let's go, mateys, but I think even Roger for a moment there was like, uh, he was smiling and his smirk kind of went down a little bit, like, eh. You know, like, well, everything will work out, and it did, it really did, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know. 
But, uh, yeah, so I, I don't know if we're gonna focus on that coming up, because this flashback right now is kind of focused on Odin and Whitebeard and everything with the scabbards. Um, I would really enjoy at least a reference to Ed War. Because considering we're bringing Shiki back into the forefront, or at least into the manga period, because the thing I was worried about is when the movie came out 10 years ago, everyone was going crazy over Shiki. But then the movie, you know, it comes and goes, just like every other movie, you know, it has a place in fans' hearts, but, you know, all the, all the hullabaloo over it kind of dies down, you know, nobody's really talking about it. And then eventually the next movie, Film Z, gets hyped up, and then that one passes, and then Film Gold gets hyped up, and then that one passes, and Stampede, Stampede, I think the hype from Stampede is still riding on, but we're going to abate that. So it's been like, you know, it's been a while, and I'm thinking, okay, well, is, is Oda even going to reference Shiki ever again? And I'm glad he really did here, okay? But I'm really hoping that in this upcoming flashback with Odin and Whitebeard as they're traveling on his ship, um, there might even be a reference to it like in the newspaper. Like, Whitebeard's reading the newspaper one day and he's just like, hmm, says here that uh, Roger clashed with Shiki recently. And Odin's like, who are they? And then Whitebeard tells, maybe, actually, that might be the reason how Odin finds out about Roger, because Odin has no idea who Roger is right now in the story, right? He has no freaking concept of him. And so Whitebeard would. And so maybe he's like, oh, yeah, there's this battle of Ed War, Roger and Shiki. And he tells, like, oh, you don't know about Roger, Odin. Well, Roger is this son of a gun. Because you know? Whitebeard and Roger, they were, they were, you know, they were rivals. But, you know, they also could sit down and have some ch sake together, you know, and they'd chill out every once in a while, okay? So it's just like, eh, there's Roger's ship. All right, let's give them hell today, guys. And then they fight, and then they beat the crap out of each other, and then Roger and Whitebeard are lying there on the deck of the Moby Dick, and they're like, way to go, you old coot. And I'm like, ah, shut up. Here, have, have a drink. All right, go, go, go. And then that's, that's how they do it, right? Okay. They were true men among men among pirates among pirates. Okay. So, uh, we all know Odin's eventually going to travel with Roger and stuff. But yeah, that, that, that might be how he finds out about that. But what happened to Shiki here? Well, after the events of Ed War and after his uh, fleet was kind of devastated by this storm, um, he didn't really have any more major clashes with Roger up until Roger was, uh, well, he found Laugh Tale. The Marine story is, you know, he was captured. The true story of it was he was sick and he decided, you know, I'm going to go out anyway. So the crew disbands 25 years ago, and then 24 years ago, he turns himself over to the Marines. Um, something I questioned for a long time, because here's the thing. I've read Strong World before, and I've used, like, snippets of it and stuff for videos, but it's been a while since I actually sat down and read the whole thing cover to cover again, and I just did that for this video. One of the questions I did have about Roger being executed at Logtown was, like, why would they do it there of all places? You know, Marine Ford. It's where they executed Ace. Like, why would you not do it at Marine Ford, considering this, he's the king of the pirates? It's actually explained um, in Strong World that Garp says, you know, because Shiki was actually visibly upset about that. Shiki charged into Marine Ford to get back, you know, not, not to get back Roger, but get back at him. He's like, you know, I'm not going to let the Marines execute Roger. He is a true pirate. If anyone's going to kill him, it's going to be me. You know, so he charges into Marine Ford, wipes out a bunch of people. He has the power of the Fuwa Fuwa or the Float Float Fruit. We'll get to that. So it, it, the name itself should pretty much give you an idea of what he does. He touches things. It gives him telekinesis, essentially. He touches things and it allows him to make things float, you know, with his mind. Okay. So, sorry, Barry. But anyway, yeah. So he just charges the Marine Ford. He's got two swords, Oto, Kogarashi, and he just starts slicing up everybody. And then that's when freaking Sengoku and Garp step out. Sengoku was an admiral at this point. Garp was, he's always a vice admiral, but he's an admiral. <laughs> he's an admiral. He gets out. They take off their cloaks. They start cracking their knuckles. I'm like, Shiki what's up, man? <laughs> you know, just barging into Marine Ford on a stormy night and just slashing the hell out of all of our soldiers, man. So did you wake up with like three ton balls this morning or what's up, buddy? You should get that checked. You want to go see a doctor? <laughs> Actually, I got a doctor right here. He's, he's Dr. Fist. You want to meet him? <laughs> So, yeah, Shiki doesn't win that fight, but he gets really mad and he's like, how dare you, you know, capture Roger and whatever. I'm going to be the one to end him. And Sengoku's like, he's not here, bro. <laughs> he's not even here. Like, did you not even check before you barged in to Marine HQ? <laughs> like, if the guy you were looking for was even here and just like, well, where else would he be? It's like, He's in the East, idiot. He's going to be executed in a week. And he's just like, 
Why would you execute him in the East if Shiki felt like even th that was more of a of a of a dishonor for Roger's legacy? Because you know he's still a pirate. They're enemies, but in the sense of like, hey, you know, I clashed with this dude. I know how terrifying this man is. I respect this man. The East Blue is the weakest sea. Why would you execute him there? And Garp was like, no, the East is not weak. The East represents peace. And we're going to, act. the idea of the Marines originally was we're going to execute the King of the Pirates and that'll eventually just snuff out that flame, that burning flame of piracy. They were hoping to just ex extinguish it right then and there. Roger, the King of the Pirates, was captured by the Marines and executed in the East Blue, which is the peaceful, the most, well, it's the weakest sea, but the most peaceful sea. That represents the ending of an era and the beginning of a new era where the Marines are going to rule through justice. Of course, that's not what ended up happening because Roger did the whole, is like, hey guys, you want to find my treasure? <laughs> well, you can have it. Just gotta find it. <laughs> And then like, oh, okay, I guess we just gotta find it then. All right. But you know, so Shiki charges at uh, Garp and Sengoku and we unfortunately don't get to see that fight. Oh my God. Oda, you understand Oda, before this series is over, you gotta show a lot of fights, right? You understand we need to see like Mihawk and Shanks at some point. You know, even if you can't fit it into the actual manga, that would be a great thing to do after One Piece ends, you know? Like, let's say Oda's like, man, I just didn't have time to fit the Mihawk-Shanks fight in. Nah, 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 it's cool, it's cool. End the story and release like little mini chapters like this. And then, you know, you can still fit it in there. But yeah, so the fight, we don't get to see how the fight goes down, but we do get to see the aftermath of it. You see that that galleon kind of just crashed into the side of Marine Fort. Um, it doesn't look as wrecked as when, you know, Whitebeard came to town because Whitebeard literally took the entire island and just, you know, but, you know, it looks pretty devastated. The town itself of Marine Ford looked pretty wrecked after that fight, but, you know, unfortunately, a Sengoku and a Garp, I mean, Shiki's strong, man, but he's not that strong, although I'm sure he got a few licks in. They captured Shiki, they threw his ass into level 6 Impel Down, and he was rather depressed while in Impel Down because he was in there when Roger was executed a week later. Sitting there and he's just like, those pirates, idiot. Because they're talking about how, oh, Roger died and the great age of piracy is upon us, yay! And Shiki's in and then everybody in level 6 is like rioting, like, yeah, great age of piracy, let us out, we want to wreak havoc! Shiki's just in his cell, just lying there and just like... Freaking idiots. Freaking, you know, these are children compared to Roger. Great age of piracy, my ass. He was a man that really kind of like, like, okay, boomer. But no, seriously, it was like, you know, back in my day, I know what real pirates were like. You know, you stupid. All you guys are doing is finding yourself a dinghy and setting out to sea to find a treasure. You know, that's not how it's done. Back in my day, I I, I served under Captain Rocks D. Zebek. Whitebeard worked alongside me and Big Mom and all these big names and everything. You guys don't know anything about that, right? Shiki felt like that this new era, instead of creating stronger pirates, which it did because Luffy, Kid, all of the supernovas, really. Uh, Cavendish, can't forget about the beautiful pirate Cavendish, of course. No, so it did create some strong pirates, but the vast majority of pirates that originated in the in the Great Pirate Era, they were mostly just like a bunch of like small town ruffians probably that got it in and over their head. You know, like I can imagine like a small, like that's kind of like how Bartolomeo started if we're being honest here. I love Bartolomeo, um, but yeah, that's kind of how it happened with him. He was just the leader of a small time, a small town gang. And he was like, oh, Luffy Senpai is a pirate. I'm going to be a pirate too. And they just set out to sea. They were, they were pretty decent at it. You know, Bartolomeo is an awesome character. He's got a strong devil fruit and everything. Uh, but you can imagine all the other people in the world that did basically the same thing that that did. You know, a bunch of small town nobodies that were like, hey, great age of piracy. Goldie Roger left his treasure behind. Grand line. I think I could find it. And then they set out to sea and they just pillage and they don't have any real respect for the craft, I guess, but Shiki certainly had respect for the craft. It's like, there's a right way to be a pirate, and there's a wrong way to be a pirate. And Shiki was like, most of these new kids... They don't have what the, they don't have what it really takes to be a true pirate, right? So he's an impel down for a little while, and then one day he wakes up and he's just like, 
nope. <laughs> nope, I'm kind of done. I'm kind of done with this place. I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to, I'm going to, he kind of gets over his malaise and he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to show these, these brats what it really means to be a pirate. So as I said, he has the power of the Fuwa Fuwa no Mi. We don't know how he got it, but it's the power of flight. And as Pell stated, there's only like five or six devil fruits that allow you to flight, even though there's many more than that from what we've seen. Like, maybe he was just talking about zones, but even then, I mean, there's quite a few zones that allow you to fly. So I don't think Pell was very well informed there. But no, Shiki's is definitely one of them, okay? His is a Paramecia, though. And it's probably the one, it, it's the one that gives you most free reign over flight, okay? It's not like, you know, Pell turning into a falcon which yeah you, you can fly that's pretty cool but you have to like flap your wings and stuff no shiki's fruit is like the flight fruit okay he touches things he can make them fly he can direct them with his mind he can fly himself uh he cannot make other human beings or other biological organisms fly or float but as long as it's an object or himself it doesn't matter how big it is it doesn't matter if it's a building it doesn't matter if it's a huge galleon or a marine warship or even an entire island doesn't matter he can make it float all right and we saw that in the movie like even though the actual like Merville in the movie was not canon like Shiki is still capable of doing that like Shiki can still lift up an entire island and the ocean around it and make even the water like float he can still do all of that right um and which could lead to really devastating attacks because he can literally pick up an entire mountain and throw it at you <laughs> you know he did that in the battle between like not a mountain but with a galleon a warship he picked up a whole marine warship and just tossed it at garp garp was just probably like mm, boom and then just the whole you know ship got collapsed over there you know whatever or, or sengoku turned into a buddha and just caught it and just tossed it over side you know so yeah he, he can do that kind of stuff right so um for some reason, in level 6 Impel Down, even though they knew he was a terrifying pirate and everything, um, you know, look at what they did to Jinbei. I mean, they they shackled Jinbei to a wall. I mean, they were really making sure Jinbei didn't get out of At least, and, and even Ace. I think Ace, they shackled his arms and his legs. With Shiki, for whatever reason, they just shackled his feet. So maybe that was the policy that changed it. Like all the prisoners were only shackled at the feet with Sea Prism after Shiki escaped. They're like, all right, we need to, we need to change our policy here a bit. We need to all prisoners get shackled from hands and feet, okay? But no, so he does the sensible thing and he cuts his legs off. I'm actually thinking about it now. I'm not 100% sure how he managed to do that in a jail cell. I mean, okay, he's in a jail cell. He's got the chains to work with that are shackling him. So I guess Shiki could have grabbed the chain and like... It would take a while, but he'd eventually get there, I assume, you know? Like, I remember thinking it would take a man 10 million years to cut off his own legs with a chain. Turns out old Shiki did it in less than, I don't know, an hour? It's implied it didn't take him very long. He cut both off, so imagine that. Imagine, like, takes him, like, three hours to cut off the one. It's like, ah! Okay, bleeding out now. All right, now the other one. You know, so it's implied he did them both pretty much at the same time, right? And then he somehow managed to get out of his set. How did he get out of his cell? Weren't the cells also made of sea prism? Man, this is causing a lot more problems the more I think about this. Hold on a second. Hold on a second here. I want to see how this is. All right, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so Shiki's impaled down. And then, no, it just, it just cuts to like, you know, two years after Roger's death. Okay, so it took him two years from kind of like suffering from the malaise and impaled down. He finally decided to get off his ass and start moving. Okay, so that was, you know, that would have been 22 years before the current storyline. Okay, because Roger was executed 24 years ago. No, it just says, yeah, he severed his own feet and then you just see him floating around and that's it. How the hell did he get out of the freaking cage? You know, uh, maybe this really just did just change the whole policy at Impel Down. Maybe they're like, holy crap. Okay, uh, level six has to have Sea Prism chains on your feet and your arms and it has to have sea prism for the for the actual cage itself maybe they decided to change it over the years because of him it's i guess they didn't really learn their lesson because they let crocodile have his hooks so it's like this prison is not really well run when you really think about it okay uh you know uh, magellan really needed to get off the shitter every now and then and think of some new policies here okay uh, magellan is it a smart move to leave crocodile with that giant pointy hook maybe he could use it to harm himself or other ah it's fine i don't care i gotta get to the bathroom all right so shiki gets out of the prison and in terms of the manga 
he pretty much just disappeared at that point after attaching his swords to him as his new feet. I mean, he doesn't really need feet because he can fly, but, you know, he's cheeky. He's like, he, once again, he's like, I'm gonna show these kids how real pirates are. Real pirates take their swords and graft them to their freaking stumps. Yeah! So his swords are Oto, which means Cherry Ten, and uh, Kogarashi, which means uh, Wintry Wind. Okay, so Cherry Ten and Wintry Wind, probably Owazumono ranks. Considering we're finding out about like Enma and Ame no Habakiri and all the swords right now in Wano, they're probably Owazumono, considering we're gonna maybe get a flashback with Shiki coming up, I, I'm hoping. Um, but no, yeah, he grafts them to his feet and he just kind of, he can walk with them pretty well, you know, or he can just, you know, he could just float around. Um, in the movie, we saw him basically using like a, a Ronkyaku kind of ability where he was like, you know, like swinging his blade and like golden Ronkyakus were coming out, Tempest Kicks and stuff. And he can actually use that in conjunction with his float powers. So he could like take his sword and swing his leg and then sends out like an energy blast and whatever it hits begins to float. Um, he actually used the fruit really um, in a really smart way in the movie where he could like hit water. Somebody's in the water. He hits the water and the water begins to float and it just covers you basically like in the water prison jutsu from Naruto and just trapped in like water and you, you know, and you drown, you know. So he used it in a really smart way. But anyway... In the manga, now here's something interesting I wanted to bring up, okay? At the end of this, he does make a few other trips. He does stop at uh, Whitebeard's ship briefly to, to talk to Whitebeard. We do see him hanging out there 20 years ago after he escapes Impel Down. He's chilling out and he's having a drink with Whitebeard, which makes more sense now why he was there because they used to be part of the same crew. It's one of the first places he goes. He's just like, hey, Whitebeard, how you been? She, Whitebeard's just like, Shiki, what the hell are you doing here, man? He's like, hey, I, I got plans. I got plans, let me tell you. Glug, glug, glug. See ya. And so he has a drink with Whitebeard, then he just kind of disappears from history. Uh, at the end of uh, Chapter Zero, we do get to meet Dr. Indigo and the people that we get to see, um, you know, at the end, uh, in Strong World right there. And Merville does make an appearance with all the crazy animals we see. Now, here is the thing that you kind of have to make your own decision on. This last page here is part of the manga, right? Um, you can either say this last page here, this serves as just the setup for the movie. This was Oda doing nothing more than just building hype up for the movie, you know? Because it even says here, it's just like, the plan goes into motion 20 years from now, and thus 20 years passed, and that's how the chapter ends. Um... You know, Oda could adapt Merville and, like, the the whole Daft Green plot. He could adapt that into the manga. Um, but I feel like, you know, because we've already seen it, we kind of already know what happens there. Um, Oda could do it in a way where it's like Shiki is starting to build up Merville, but it didn't work out the way it planned. Like, it, it, the plan didn't work out. You know, Dr. Indigo couldn't do it the right way or whatever. And it's just like, Shiki tried to do this, but it failed. And now Shiki has to go do something else. Because I would, as much, as much as I would love Shiki to be back in the story, I don't want it to just be strong world again. You know what I mean? I, I, the movie's amazing, but I don't want it to be like that. So you could either do it in a way where it is still Merville and everything, but it's different from in the movie. The plan is a little different than what it was in the movie. Or he attempted to do Merville in the manga, but it failed and he has to go do something else. Like 15 years after he tried it, Dr. Indigo's like, oh, it's a failure. And it's like, ah, crap, all right. Well, I guess we gotta figure out another plan. You know, all right. And so maybe Shiki is literally just laying low right now. He's just like somewhere. I mean, really, it would be easy for him to hide. All he would have to do, he could literally make sky islands. He could just find an island, or not even an island, just find a big chunk of earth, like a really big rock, and just make it float and just whoop, go up into the White Sea and just chill out there and just make his own, you know, uh, hideout, really. Um, his ship that we see in the movie is a flying ship, which is, like, pretty damn cool, right? So he could do any of that stuff, really. Um, he could just hide and just wait, and he might be like, maybe noticing now in the world there is a little bit of a, of a, of a stirring here. You have, Bla you have Whitebeard dead, you have uh, the Yonko on the move, you know, Kaido and Big Mom and Alliance, you got Shanks doing stuff, um, Reverie just happened. I think there's more than enough stuff going on right now in the present storyline of One Piece for Shiki to be at least interested in this. Shiki to at least be looking down from his giant, you know, island fortress, which he probably has, and is just, like, smoking a big fat cigar, like, 
I think it's time I make an appearance. You know, maybe his backup plan is like, all right, the whole Merville thing didn't work out. Uh, let's try finding Pluton now. Or let's try finding Uranus or an ancient weapon. Or let's try going here and doing this or whatever. You know, maybe uh, his, his, his story might connect back to rocks. Like, I'm gonna, I've been looking for my former Captain Rox's treasure for 20 years. The bastard hid it somewhere, you know? So, it's very likely that that could be the case. Also, uh, we got that cover page with Crocus kind of having a drink with an unknown character. But, I mean, in the colorized manga, it looks pretty much like Shiki. The only difference is this guy, he's wearing the Kasa hat, right? And Shiki has the wheel embedded into his head. Uh, after the Ed War incident, after there was a little bit of a fight and the whole storm whipped up, he somehow ended up getting a steering wheel lodged in his head. As you do. You know, whatever. Um, you know, so, uh, but, I mean, clearly here he doesn't have the steering wheel. I mean, unless the hat, I mean, no, because the steering wheel extends even more beyond the hat, right? So either he figured out some way to remove it, or he, like, filed it down so it was, like, it's still there, but it's, like, really ground down to the point where it's, like, you can't even notice it anymore. And he just did, like, a comb over. So there's any number of reasons how he could get the, the, the steering wheel out of his head. I mean, that was more of a gag, if anything. It gave him a very unique appearance, you know. And, of course, he is a lion, so he needs the mane of a lion. I know this isn't a lion. This is more of, like, a coma inu, which is a dog. But dogs are like lions, right? Cats and dogs are the same, basically, right? So, yeah, I, I, I also throughout the idea that was Odin way way back in the day before we even knew what Odin looked like this was well before Wano I had a theory like maybe that's Odin he's talking to Crocus they were on the same crew now that we know what Odin looks like yeah this is definitely not Odin so I mean in terms of appearances and color palettes it's pretty much Shiki right and uh, maybe I mean it makes perfect sense that he's with Crocus because Shiki having the ability to fly he can pretty much go anywhere in the world he wants that's the great thing about Shiki any arc, any place, New World, Grand Line, Four Blues, Calm Belt, Laugh Tail, freaking Marijua, Sky Islands, pretty much anywhere except for, like, the deep sea, Shiki can literally pop up at any point with his powers. You know, he just, he doesn't even need a ship. He can literally just hop on, like, he could go up to a tree, cut down a tree, hop on the tree, and just be like, giddy up, you know, and just... Psh, psh fly off into the distance, you know, it's like, it's like just flying on, that, that's, that's Shiki, the golden lion, flying on a tree, you know, and just sails off to his, look, he doesn't even need the tree, he could, he's Superman, basically, just like, up, up, and away, and just sails away to wherever he needs to be, right, so, he could show up in Wano, he can, I don't know if he will, but he can, um, and I don't know, though, it, it really just depends on what direction Oda wants to take this, if Oda wants to focus more on, like, the rocks thing, um, you know, like, oh, rocks is kind of a big deal, we're gonna have rocks show up again, or maybe Shiki might, if rocks is still alive, maybe Shiki met rocks, and they kind of joined, uh, forces, trying to get the band back together, that's an option, you could take it, Shiki could just show up at any moment, at any time, and be like, you know, my master plan is now in fruition, you know, your straw hats, he could show up at Elbaf, he could show up at Laugh Tale, he could show up wherever, but, considering Oda finally brought him up after so many years in the flashbacks. Uh, we know Captain John is dead and deceased at Thriller Bark. We know that not every member of the Rocks crew is still alive. But, you know, nothing's really been brought up involving Shiki. He's also a really smart guy. Just the fact that he's, like, he's patient and he's smart. You know, he has this plan. He's a little bit more theatrical in the movie, just, like, doing a little bit more funky dances and everything like that. But he's a smart guy and he's patient. So he's like, all right, you know, we're going to wait until my time is right. And with all the chaos going on in the world right now, I think the time could definitely be right. So, yeah, let me know what you think about Shiki below. Uh, let me know what you think he, he, you know, he's been up to the last 20 years in the context of the manga. If he does show up again, is it going to be something Merville related or is it going to be something completely different? Um, where's he been at so long? You know, what about his swords, his swords Mato rank? Um, you know, and what allegiances is he going to have? You know, is he just going to be his own thing? Because Whitebeard's dead now. Roger's dead. Um, you know, other than getting, uh, other than forging an alliance with Rocks or possibly Blackbeard, because if Blackbeard does have this connection with Rocks, either being Rocks' son or a family member or just a, a, a student under Rocks, um, Shiki might know who Blackbeard is in that context and might be like, oh, hey, you're trying to follow, uh, you know, Rocks' legacy here. 
all right, like, like, Shiki goes back to the Beehive Island for, like, nostalgia, and he sees, you know, Blackbeard base there, and he's like, hmm. <gasps> what if Shiki is the 10th Titanic captain? We always assumed it was Aokiji, but I'll tell you what, the only reason we assumed it was Aokiji was because we don't know anybody else that could take it. We know that the Blackbeard crew has 10 captains, plus Blackbeard himself, who's like the admiral there, um, and his main crew consists of nine. Aokiji, we know, is allied, but we don't know if he's an actual part of the crew. He's the only other really strong person we know for a fact is part of the crew, but he's not really. So, that would indicate that the 10th slot is open, we just don't know who it is. What if it's Shiki? What if Shiki came back to the island and he's like, oh, you guys are here now. What the hell? Blackbeard steps out and he's like, oh, I'm, you know, I, I studied under rocks or rocks was my father or something. Oh, by the way, check it out. I have the Yami Yami no me and the Guru Guru no me, Whitebeard's power. Shiki at that point would definitely be like, even if he was maybe thinking about using Blackbeard or manip manipulating him in some way, Shiki would definitely be invested in that. Shiki would be like, hmm. Yeah, it seems like you're kind of holding all the cards right now. Considering you have two Devil Fruits, the only person in the history of ever, the, to my knowledge, to do that, you seem to be pretty on top of this. So I think Shiki would, even if he wants to double-cross him later, Shiki would definitely hang out with Blackbeard for a little while. I'm going to go with that theory. I like that idea. I might do it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think about that and work that out a little bit, but I like that idea. All right. So anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. It's a good thing to talk about Shiki. I think he deserves it. He's the golden lion, king of the jungle, and all that stuff. Um, you guys have a good day. Sorry about making you float, Barry. Oh, Barry, I almost forgot. Guys, this is a special time. Tomorrow is Barry's evaluation day. Yeah, contract's up, Barry. We gotta see. Are you gonna be worth it to keep you on? I don't know. You did some stuff these past few months. I mean, you did some good stuff, but also bad stuff. I gotta, I gotta check the record. Later, everybody. I gotta do paperwork.